Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to Working to Change. Today, we're going to be talking about the law of attraction. I ran across an interesting video that I was watching. It was from two years ago. It's by the YouTube channel, uh, Jane, Jane, Janie. I think that's the name of it. I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. This is my first time watching this individual. So let's go ahead and get into this video, um, and I'll explain what's going on. So one of the things I want to say, and we're going to start a little bit deep into the video, but y'all know who this is, Esther Hicks, one of the person who started the whole law of attraction. And eventually this law of attraction ended up turning into something different. There was an individual who came up with this new book, this new concept in 2006. And that's where I want to start. Gary have been spreading the word of that so-called secret. It didn't stop the Abraham Hicks money-making machine from running as usual. The secret, just like Esther and Jerry's works, were repackaged ideas from the same root, New Thought. It was perfect to promise you health, wealth, love and abundance all in one go to package it all under an umbrella of spirituality. I believe that once you discover the secret, that you can immediately start creating the life you want, whether it's getting out of debt, whether it's finding a more fulfilling job, even falling in love. Rhonda's film earned her millions, and it gave an incredible boost to the careers of the supposed teachers it featured, allowing them to branch away from the franchise to run their own coaching businesses and cash in on spiritual retreats. But I remind you, New Thought is a belief system perfectly designed for grifters who don't care for the desperately ill, poor, and helpless who line their pockets, leading them to push incredibly dangerous ideas onto their victims. So that what if I just vision let me start here. We're going to watch this whole segment, this whole section right here. I think it's important. But let me say this uh, as part of my thing. So I found the secret back in 2017, I want to say, um, a little bit before I started this particular YouTube channel. <sighs> I'm embarrassed to even tell this story. And this is how they got me. I remember watching this whole thing. And I really thought the secret was a true thing. And I didn't even know about thinking, thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is part of the whole thing that happened to the Thinking Grow Rich, which happened a few years later. I used to watch the secret because I truly believe that you could make money and truly believe that you could. You could make a million dollars if you just thought about it, if you just thought about it. Right. I remember having a whole vision board. Right. I'm not against vision boards. Uh, if you're putting action to it, I mean, action, not thoughts. I put a whole vision board up and here's my embarrassing moment. As we continue, I put up there that by the time I was 35 years old, that I would make wait for it. Thirty six million dollars. I know you're looking at me like what an idiot. Absolutely. But these people fed off my emotions at one of the worst times in my life. Right. Well, I was at my lowest. I had just I think I had just quit my job and I was so poor. I was working for this business and we weren't making any money. I was a business owner, believe it or not. It failed miserably. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, I was a business owner and we were trying to make money. And so I, I knew no other way to get it going but to just fool myself into believing that I was going to make all this money. It's the only way that it's the only thing that kept me going, kept me motivated. And so eventually I had to let it go because I was so broke. And uh, so, yeah, I believe that at one point I was going to make thirty six million dollars and I was going to own multiple subways. <laughs> I hate telling the story, man, but I just want to let you know that this even got to me. Visualize checks coming in the mail. So I just visualize a bunch of checks coming in the mail. Within just one month, things started to change. And this is amazing. Today, I just get checks in the mail. I get a few bills, but I get more checks than bills. But now serious questions have been raised about his business dealings. In this exclusive investigation, Ben Fordham has found investors left high and dry and demanding justice. A former student of Shermer's who spent $30,000 to learn about the stock market. Part of the, the funds were supposed to be put into a trading fund and David would then trade those funds on the, on the future stock market. What happened to that fund? Well, we don't know. It's, it's their money. It they not, paid you the tuition fees. It's not their and money. And you told them that you would take $5,000 out of each person's tuition and trade it on the market. And they would receive 50% of the profits. They never received any profits. Where's the money? That money, it, and, and come back to the original question. Where is the money? 
please answer the question. I, uh, the, the money, and, and as I, someone asked me recently the Where same question. Where is the money, David? Well, well, I've please the answer the question. Where is the money? Where is the money? You tell me. Most people look at their current state. I'm sorry, I can't. We're going to go into this guy as well. But uh, I can't help but laugh because you know you caught somebody a lot when they go. <clears throat> where's. Are you, you're asking where's the money? <laughs> I've done that so many times. People ask me a question. Well, sometimes I'm trying to figure out, and I, I do this sometimes when I repeat something, I'm trying to make sure I formulate the answer correctly. Because sometimes somebody throws a question at you that you're not prepared for. And you're just like, well, how would I answer that? Somebody said, um, Trey, black people are blank. If y'all ever taken those kind of tests, if you try to go for some, 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 some jobs, like a federal job, government jobs, or bigger jobs that require tons of background checks and psych texts, uh, a psych test, they will ask questions such as that. They'll be like, black people are... Okay. In my head, what do you want to say? I want to say black people are great people. I mean, but really, you could say it. You could just as easily say black people are people of African descent, right? You don't think to say that when you hear LGBT people are people who tend to be attracted to the same sex. That could be the answer you give, but they're trying to test to see what you would think if if you go LGBT people are sometimes misunderstood that right there shows how differently you think instead of the you could easily just put the facts about lgbt people or you could put something on your feelings about it and saying you think they're misunderstood you know what i'm saying it doesn't matter how you answer it. they're just trying to test you to see how you think right if you've ever taken those kind of tests at certain jobs um certain jobs are different you know <clears throat> but i'm just saying anyway that that was just funny back to this guy that is the biggest thing that some people don't fall, uh, understand. The, a lot of these things are scams, right? We find that out more and more as you get older, right? I feel sorry for people who are younger who really think that this stuff works. People who fell for crypto, not saying crypto is bad, but there are obviously people who lost tons of money in the crypto game, the whole FTX thing. And there's a lot of people who fall for scams such as courses. There's a woman I saw the other day who was selling courses Selling courses on how to become rich. You want to know how much those courses were? Just take five seconds to guess. I'll give you five seconds. If you guess $5,000, you're wrong. Wait, if you guess $2,000, you're also wrong. If you guess $30,000 a month, you'd be correct. Can you believe that? $30,000, not a year, people, not for a lifetime, a month. But don't you worry. Guess how much they had it on sale for? $11,000 a month. And this was a woman who is just trying to sell courses at $11,000 a month on sale. And, and it comes out to find out that this woman was getting paid from her uh, husband. All the money she was making was from her husband. Isn't that crazy? These guys and these people out here, well, scam the heck out of you. This guy was getting all this money, and guess what? Bloop, it's gone. <laughs> Where's the money, Bill? The money. I'm just saying, you really got to watch out for these people. Let's continue. ...of affairs, and they say, this is who I am. That's not who you are. That's who you I'm were. I'm going to tell you right now before I continue to one. This one's going to get your blood boiling. When I was watching this part, I was so upset. It just goes to show you how dangerous these people can be. And so you must continually invest in yourself. You've got to grow in every single way. Your money is nothing more than the amount of energy, paper energy, that you have in your pocket or purse. Hey, what's the problem? Two people aren't breathing. There's no pulse. Yes. Police are focusing their investigation on James Arthur Ray, the motivational speaker and self-help guru who ran the five-day retreat. Over 60 people were in the sweat lodge for two hours as the culmination of Ray's spiritual warrior retreat. It was pitch black inside and extremely hot, 
When it was over, two people were dead. Kirby's life ended while she was trying to improve it. That's when she found self-help guru James Arthur Ray. And I can help you. I really can. The motivational speaker had already built a multi-million dollar business, launched by the popular movie The Secret. She reached one of the highest level workshops, a retreat, which cost her her life savings. $10,000. Do find the defendant, James Arthur Ray, on the offense of negligent homicide as a result of the death of Kirby Brown as follows, guilty. On November 23rd, I was... Okay. Let me talk about this. If y'all remember, there was a guru out there uh, called um, Dan Locke. If y'all remember Dan Locke, who still, I think, believe to this day still teaches, but he got outed a while back. You know who used to follow Dan Locke? Yeah, this is embarrassing stuff, man. A buddy of mine. And his buddy, I'm just kidding, it was me. Uh, <laughs> it was me, man. I used to follow Dan Locke. You know, I used to be a salesman, as you guys uh, already know. Top five, right? And it's so funny um, because I used to try to learn how to sell from this man, Dan Locke. Do I think he had some random good advice? Yeah, he had the most, he, he's, he gave you advice you could get in training at a job. That's all he did. Um, but I believed in him, right? I almost spent money on his courses. There's a guy that, if you remember, he went on CoffeeZilla and talked about how much money he lost. Talk of people losing ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. I think one guy lost $50,000 in the end spending money. And he's told a story. He told a story of one time Dan Locke got up on stage and he said, the, he said something to the tune of, do you want to be, do you want to have me be your Sifu just today? Or you want me to be your Sifu for life? And people were literally going up after the thing. I think he said it was like $15,000 or something like that. People were having their credit cards get declined. People were crying when their cards got declined. They thought this was their whole life literally crying and you think that's so crazy like that could never be you these two people went into a tent in a sauna believing in a man so much they overheated and passed out and passed away we've heard of cults that do this kind of stuff too where people believe so much people think it's so easy not to fall into this but understand me and you who can't fall for this now. And I fell for it myself. I fell for Dan Locke. I fell for Napoleon Hill. I fell for Bob Proctor. I fell for uh, the secret. I fell for all these other guys, right? The thing is, okay. The thing is, it's so easy to fall for this stuff, but you don't think it's going to be you. Fortunately for me and fortunately for you, you may have seen the red flags, but to say sometimes that, oh, you just got to use your common sense. Common sense comes from learning. People don't just have common sense. If that was the case, little kids wouldn't do stupid stuff. They would just use their common sense, but they don't know anything yet. And it can happen to adults, too. When you get down on your luck, right, and you, let's say you're not a social media person, you, you end up to 24, and eventually you lose your job, you're struggling. One day you get online because you're bored or something. And you click on a video that says how to make $10,000 by the next month. And you have no idea. You've never seen anything like this. You just show up and go, huh? Well, I'm only, I mean, you're only 24. You just lost your job. And you're just thinking, well, I got to get it. I got to figure something out. And you see this good looking guy or this good looking girl telling you all this stuff. Right. They're showing you the fancy car. They're showing you all the money that they're making. And you're just like, well, what else can I do? That's where they get the people, people. That's where they get people is when they're on the last leg, when they are so desperate, they don't have anywhere else to go. So they're like, you know what? Screw it. It's their last resort and they go for it. That's the people they're trying to get. They're not going to get somebody who's making money. They're not going to get somebody who has a nine to five and they're doing fine. They're going to get the people who are, I, what else can I do? I'm on my last leg. And so they believe everything and their brain just starts to believe it. Next thing you know, you're sitting in a cult or next thing you know, you're sitting at a mega church that's taking your money or lying to your face or you're sitting inside a tent getting overheated. It's, that's what makes this stuff so sick is that they prey on these people who feel like they have nowhere else to go. Let me introduce you to Kathy Goodman. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I truly believed in my heart 
with my strong faith that I was already healed. I saw myself as if cancer was never in my body. From the time I was diagnosed, which was November 23rd, to the time I was healed totally was approximately three months. And that's without radiation and chemotherapy. You will attract everything that you require. If it's money, you need your. We're not, we're not gonna go too deep on Kathy because obviously it's more of a sensitive subject. Um, but I will say this: the same lady who I mentioned earlier, um, Miss Esther Hicks, she said the same thing about how you can speak cancer out of your life. I want to, you know what? Matter of fact, I do have something I want to say. I think what used to be so dangerous back, you know, I've always been involved in certain churches, right? I remember going to a church worship service and I vividly remember sitting in a circle with people and we were talking about healing. Right. And sometimes when somebody said something to the tune of, listen, it doesn't matter what the doctors say. God can heal you. And I said, and I said, I totally believe that. I believe God can heal. However, the foolishness is comes from you saying that the doctors are wrong in their diagnosis. When a doctor says you have cancer, what you would, I would hear a lot is the doctor's wrong. You, you, you don't have cancer. I believe it's not there. It's like, you can't do that to people. You're making it seem that the doctor is saying out of malicious intent, you have cancer. Like he wants to tell you that, like he wants to go or she wants to go. Yeah, you have cancer. It's just foolish to think that these doctors are doing their jobs. They're telling you the truth. It would be, it would be unethical for them to say, Hey, listen, these report here, they say you got cancer, but I mean, let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. I mean, God, I mean, I was praying the other day and God says you don't have cancer. So I'm just telling you because, you know, I got to do my job, but you don't really have cancer. Just go, go to your local church, pray for it. You'll be fine. That'd be foolish, right? You can't have a doctor come out and say something like that. So why would a pastor or something come and say, you're cancer free. I get when people want to be healed because we believe in the miracles. We see those things. And can it happen? Can cancer? And we see, for me personally, have I seen miracles? Of course. Of course. But I've also seen people die from cancer, too. So it, I, 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 you don't want to be, I hate when I stutter like that. You don't want to be foolish and to um, tell people that they can just think their cancer away. You need to go through the chemotherapy. You need to go through all that stuff and do the best you can to preserve your life. But at the same time, you know, be praying. There's nothing wrong with praying during that. There's nothing wrong with going to your church, praying for healing and hoping that the cancer goes away or it goes into remission. Um, that's fine. But don't get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm just not going to believe in it. Because that would be foolish if I did that to one of my family members, my son, my daughter, my my wife. You know, if I said something to they told my wife she has cancer and I'm just like, oh, I just don't believe it. We're not going to go through therapy, nothing. I know they say that it can definitely help and you're more likely to survive if you do do this. No, we're not going to believe in that at all. That'd be so foolish. That's dangerous to teach people to just ignore the diagnosis. That that was my point I wanted to make there. And now we're on to, y'all know, the guy, Bob Proctor. Attract. If it's people you need, you'll attract. If it's a certain book you need, you'll attract. Bob Proctor is a preacher of the law of attraction, appearing numerous times during Rhonda Byrne's film. But perhaps you may not know, Bob Proctor had also been a big promoter of the multi-level marketing company, Vima, a company that specifically targeted universities, aiming to find teenagers and young adults who are filled with dreams of wealth and fame. 
Here you create your own income. You can be 16 and make as much money as you want. You can be 85 and make as much money as you want. Why would you let somebody else tell you how much money you're worth? That doesn't make sense to me. So Bob Proctor made several appearances at their events, as his books were promoted amongst Vima's young distributors. In fact, I introduced my own wife to the company, and she earns tens of thousands of dollars now. Now, I recommended that she join a company called Vima, and I recommended it because I know the man that owns the company. And there's a company I'm working with, Vima, and I'm working with their people worldwide because I'm going to tell you, this is one of the best opportunities for time and money freedom that you're ever going to find. The opportunity that you're looking at here with Vima will give you that. And Charles is going to explain an idea about Vima, about what a phenomenal product it is, but what a phenomenal compensation plan. Now, I've got a reputation that is worldwide. I wouldn't do anything to stain or do hurt my reputation. In 2015, the company was shut down for essentially being a pyramid scheme. Alex Morton, one of the figureheads for Vima, later went on to promoting a similar multi-level marketing scheme. My name is Alex Morton and I'm the Executive Vice President of iMarkets Live. Now, who else do you think promotes iMarkets Live, attending and speaking at their conferences? Mr. Bob Rocker. I believe that's the goal of all thinking people that join the I Am Academy. There's such a phenomenal opportunity here. But of course, this is no issue to Bob Proctor, as he can continue promoting these schemes whilst charging for his own self-help courses and programs. You are all, and I am, God's highest form of creation. Nothing can guess what you and I are capable of. Now, y'all can go watch the rest of that video. Um, it is called The Dark uh, World. No, y'all can't see it at all. It's called The Dark World of New Age Gurus by Jane Janey. Uh, I'll put that link down in the description if you want to watch the rest of that video. For you people who are watching this live, obviously, that's different. Let me uh, say this last part. <sighs> Let me tell y'all a story. Sit back. Relax. I knew a man such as a Bob Proctor. Not Bob, I don't know Bob. But I knew a man when I was younger, right? We were actually, I wouldn't say we were close, but I talked to him a lot. I'm talking like we sat down had serious talks. Multi-millionaire man. I'm talking, guys, I don't know how many acres he owned, but I'm telling you, he owned so much land that he owned two sides of a road. I'm serious. He had a lake not a lake he had a pond he had multiple ponds but he had a pond so big it looked like a lake by his house sorry for you spaz here hearing somebody mow the lawn you know it's part of being a millionaire guys you know i got people out there ready to anyway <laughs> this kid anyway like i was saying so i knew this guy who was making millions 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 had so much land, I had never seen so much. It looked like he owned his own small, he, it looked like he owned a small town, how big the land was, right? I remember at some point, I was used to wanting to be like him. I wanted to be a millionaire, and I thought that he was getting his money so good. He was such a nice guy. He was doing all this stuff. He For my church, he would take kids out, and he would take them to uh, church camps. He wouldn't have, ch this, this is what I'm telling you guys, his land was so much too, that he didn't have church camps at some random place. As you guys know, church camps normally happen at a college or a university. The church camps happen at his land, on his land. That's how big it was. Anyway, so anyway, we're, we're having a good time I'm talking to this man. He's such a nice guy. He's got his, uh, his daughter was in the worship band with me. We're doing everything. It's so good. It's so great, right? A couple of years passed by. I'm still hearing about this man. We still are in conversation. He even went to bat for me at one time because at one time, Believe it or not, you know, me being the greatest guy on the planet, I got suspended from the uh, um, worship band um, for doing crazy things as a teenager. Um, so I got suspended. I'll just tell you guys, I just got suspended because I got drunk. Um, I went out to a party, got drunk, and that was a no-no. And so I went out to a party, I got drunk, and he went to bat for me saying, dude, y'all being ridiculous, the boy messed up. He went to bat for me to get back on the team. Um, it did work. <laughs> I never got back on. And so a couple years goes by. Um, 
you know, I'm talking to him here and there, but I go on, I do my life. I become part of a worship band somewhere else doing my thing because our worship pastor that was at that church went to another church. So I went there to go help him out. We're having a good old time. One day I open up a newspaper. Yeah, well, that's right. Newspaper. That's what we did, baby. Open up a newspaper. I see his company, right? I'm reading this article. I see his company had gotten frozen, right? All his assets were frozen. Company is gone, disappears. And you know what ends up happening? It ends up turning out that his whole thing, and I went to his seminars and stuff at his, you know, his really, he had a really nice place where he did seminars. I went there, decided not to do it. I was broke. I was a young teenage man. It comes out to find, we find out that later it was a pyramid scheme. Pyramid scheme. All the money got frozen. It's gone. And to this day, as far as I know, they never got that money back. He lost the lawsuit. The company got shut down. This man, who is so nice, so great, and he went to bat for me. I'm just a regular old kid. To come out and find out he was scamming people out of their money to the point where the government got involved. I can't believe it. I, none of us could believe it. Right? In fact, that whole church that I was going to, shut down. Gone. They went bankrupt. Had no money. That church no longer even exists anymore. That's the crazy stuff that happens. You think you're around all these nice people who wear ties, who wear suits, all this stuff. They're nice people. And you find out behind the backs of the, the church members, behind the backs of normal civilians, stealing money from every single one of them, right? Claiming to be this multimillionaire smart guy. He's doing all this stuff, all this charity. But in the end, uh, I keep looking. Oh, I'm looking at the right camera. But in the end, he ruined people's lives. I can't defend that. I don't care if he went to bat for me. I don't care if he was nice to us by letting us come on his land and sleep there sometimes um, to do our little camps and stuff, to do our retreats. I don't care. At the end of the day, he ruined lives. So the reason his money is frozen and the reason that money is gone. I would love to say he was a great man, but he wasn't. He was an awful man, terrible person. I'm not saying that about Bob Proctor. Do I question him? Of course I do. Of course I question what Bob Proctor does. Okay? I don't believe in him. I don't believe what he's teaching is right. I do believe he is feeding off some people, but this is all my opinion. I could be completely wrong. All I'm here to say is that for you guys who go into the secret, you guys who go in there thinking you can make money fast, you guys who think that it's all easy, just know that behind a lot of these people who are making these millions, behind these people who are making all this money, they're taking money from you guys because they're feeding off you on the FOMO, the fear of missing out. They're feeding off you guys wanting to make money because they know that you get tired of being broke. They know that you see all this stuff, social media calling you broke from other average people, especially if you're on social media a lot. People are just going to make fun of you. They're going to call you names. They're going to call you broke. They're going to call you this. You may get into the red pill content and hear how broke you are. You may get into this kind of content, hear how broke you are. And then the young men and young women, they just feel like they're failures. Young women don't feel like they're hot enough. They don't feel like they got the best makeup. They don't feel like they have the best outfits. Men don't feel like they have the best cars. They don't feel like they're dating the best women. And they go out of their way to try to get this stuff because they think it gives them so much status. Instead of taking the the more complicated route, which may take 5, 10, 15 years for you to come into that kind of money, they rather try to get it fast. And people end up getting their lives ruined. And some people end up taking their lives because they fall and they feel so stupid, so humiliated, so embarrassed. Their, their wife or husband left them. The kids are gone because they decided to make a decision and it's all dead now. These people are dangerous. Please, before you go jumping into a course, do your research. Before you go jumping into believing a, a random YouTuber, do your research. If these people aren't open with you and expressing your failures, if they're saying something that sounds too good to be true, go ahead and believe it's too good to be true. That's fine. Don't go with the fear of missing out because you see some random person in crypto make a million dollars and not, not knowing that the vast majority of people didn't make any money. Don't fall for it. Work hard. Do what you can. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a little bit of luck. But hard work will normally get you there. Good luck to you all. Please, please stay away from the law of attraction as the way it's being taught today. Goodbye.